Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 and um, I worked on this a little bit more, my uh, Retro Pi. Um, I'm using this because this is actually the only Raspberry Pi I have with me right now. But um, this is actually not for this uh, Mini NES unit. Just so happens all the software is compatible and I'm just using this for prototyping basically. But what I am actually trying to do is, oh, let me just get this out of the way, is um, for my arcade, little mini arcade tabletop cabinet that I'm working on. So what I ended up doing was um, buying some clear arcade buttons, like uh, kind of opaque white ones, and I bought a couple of these, um, they're RGB WS2812 uh, serially controlled LEDs. So my idea is, uh, depending on what game you have selected, it'll change the colors of the buttons to match sort of like a palette that's related to whatever console that you have. So, for instance, like uh, SNES games will have the uh, Super Famicom, you know, uh, red, yellow, green, blue sort of buttons going on. And so it'll dynam dynamically change and I can update the code, I can set my own color palettes for any system that I want. So what I ended up doing was writing a simple bash script uh, that runs on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and so when um, when it starts an emulator, it'll basically report uh, using just a simple string, whether it's NES, SNES, GBA, whatever. And I have a bash script that sits there and um, when that gets called, it'll check to see which one it is and um, it'll execute um, basically toggling uh, three sets of GPIO uh, dependent on which system was actually um, is running currently. So if it's NES, um, GPIO 21, 20, and 26 will be 001, SNES 010, et cetera, et cetera. The default case is where they're all high, which is basically when it's sitting at the menu, um, I want all the buttons to be all white. And uh, when they turn off, um, basically I'll go zero, which is basically when the system's sitting in the off state. Um, I want obviously the buttons to be off also. Uh, so there are two parts of this. Um, the, the software, the scripts that run on the actual Raspberry Pi itself that control the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi, and those send a signal to the connected um, Arduino. A very important thing to be careful of, I'm only using inputs into the Arduino because this is running off 5 volts, this is running off 3.3 volts. Uh, if I try to output a 5 volt signal to control, you know, as an output into the Raspberry Pi, you could very easily blow the pins or, you know, damage the Raspberry Pi. So I'm only using this as an input, which is why I don't have any level shifting, uh, because the 5 volt imp uh, inputs for the ATmega 328P are 5 volt tolerance, or 3.3 volt tolerant. So it'll read a 3.3 volt high signal as high, even though it expects 5 volts nominally. So it all works. Um, I'll get on with this uh, demonstration. This is a power supply just to supply the 5 volts for here. So I'll turn that on. You can see none of the LEDs turn on. I am going to use a white piece of paper here because it gets so darn bright it's hard to see what the heck's going on. And I'm going to turn this guy on and switch my monitor over so I can see what emulator I'm actually selecting. And so while as it's booting, um, until it gets to a, a script which will uh, allow control over the GPIO, it just sits there and it does nothing. Uh, so we had to wait a little while for it to actually come up and then it'll display all white on the uh, buttons once it gets close to booting to the main menu. And there we go. So we boot up far enough, it got to that script that uh, initializes all the GPIO. And so it sets them all high. So this is the default, the menu um, case, basically, where all the lights are white. And it'll sit on this, basically, as long as you're in the main menu. And there we go. So we're currently sitting on the main menu here, if you don't believe me, there. So let's just go through. So I'm going to select uh, Super Nintendo right now. And just select a game, doesn't matter what. And you can see once it loads up, it just switched palettes. And you can see now um, it has two white and then red, green, uh, blue, and a yellow. It's, it's kind of hard to see. The camera is kind of washing everything out because it's so darn bright. And then I, I set these two buttons as purple, like maybe for start, select, something like that. I don't know. Or left, right. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, 
Um, my arcade has eight buttons, so I, I only set eight buttons worth, basically. So I can exit back out, and it'll reset them all back to white right before it goes to the main menu. Just did it right there. So now, let's go over to Game Boy. And I just randomly selected um, green for two of the buttons, and you can see they just changed right now here. So these will be like A and B and start and select, and the other buttons aren't actually necessary. I might not even light them up. Uh, currently, I haven't really thought about the color palettes that I want, but I programmed everything. It all technically works. I just need to pick, you know, the most desirable colors, basically. Um, that'll be easy, though. <laughs> That's just aesthetic. This is all technical that I've already completed. And we're almost at the main menu, and it already turned back to white. So now I'm going to select Game Boy Advance and just load up a game and it turned the two buttons yellow here yeah I'll probably do that for the systems that don't require all eight buttons I just won't light up the buttons that aren't going to be used that'll be very simple to do actually uh, I'll have to change that in the Arduino code because the Arduino is the one that's controlling the uh, actual LED timing control signal it's just getting kind of a master control signal from the Raspberry Pi and let's just exit out of the Game Boy Advance emulator and it should turn back from yellow to white right there. And we're back at the main menu, Game Boy Color. Likewise, I believe I set this to red or something maybe. Oh no, blue. Never mind. <laughs> so these two buttons are blue. Um, exit out. They should turn back to white and they did. These will look a lot nicer when they're actually inside the buttons. I've seen um, some people 3D printed uh, custom mounts for like the standard arcade buttons so that you can fit these um, RGB LEDs inside. Because normally they just have a permanently colored LED, whatever. Um, they're not supposed to be color changing. I just loaded up the NES emulator and these two buttons are red now. Uh, just to match the A and B red buttons on the actual NES controller. And I can exit back out, and these will change back white. And they did. So let's just do a shutdown test now. Now I'm just sitting on the main menu here, um, just to show that the it'll actually shut off all the button lights when you shut off the console, the main power. So that shuts off, and these will go down as soon as um, the entire system shut down. And it has. So let me just turn this off. So what's going to end up happening um, with my arcade cabinet is I'm obviously I'm not going to use this exact Raspberry Pi. I already have another one. This is going to stay in here. Uh, but I'm going to clone the SD card and put it on the other one. Uh, luckily, all this extra software they added doesn't interfere if I just pull these wires off. This NES uh, mini NES Raspberry Pi operates as normal. You wouldn't even notice that it has these extra features. You just run in the background. So I'm going to replicate the power control circuitry, um, solder another chip to the, the, our, the tabletop arcade Raspberry Pi. I'm going, I ordered a much smaller um, uh, Arduino with the 328P, like a much smaller board that I can just program over ICSP. It doesn't have USB on board. It's very cheap. Ended up being like a dollar or something. So I'm going to program this firmware onto that and wire it directly to kind of a series daisy chain of all the LEDs in the arcade buttons. And the way I actually have it coded right now is, um, so these three inputs obviously connect to the Raspberry Pi. And then what I'm going to do is instead of having a USB controller, all the arcade buttons will be directly hooked up to GPIO on the Raspberry Pi. And they'll also be mirrored, basically, another wire going to pretty much all the inputs on the Arduino so my idea was um, if you don't touch the controls for about 30 seconds or a minute it goes into an attract mode where it just flashes like pretty rainbow flowing colors throughout all the buttons and so I just have a simple timeout that's why I have this wire here during the test so that this would simulate a, a button permanently being pressed basically uh, so it wouldn't go into timeout while I was demonstrating the rest of the features so yeah, uh, if you guys just want to see that real quick, we can just take that wire off, turn this guy on, and you can see it booted right up into this uh, attract mode, basically.
and I can just short that wire again and it turns off. So anyway, yeah, uh, this is mostly done software-wise. Hardware, I, I got it figured out. I just got to actually sit down and solder all of it once I get back home. But anyway, yeah, this is uh, definitely good progress I'm making. Um, I learned a lot about uh, writing bash scripts, actually, in uh, Python on the Raspberry Pi. I mostly program embedded stuff, so I never really had experience um, programming, you know, those two things. So that was really cool that I uh, sat down and I got to figure out um, and kind of teach myself how, how exactly that works and how to read or set GPIO and, um, you know, how to execute loops and bash scripting and whatnot. Anyway, I've rambled on for long enough. I'm really excited. This is going to be absolutely awesome once I actually complete this. Unfortunately, it's one of those things where I don't have any of my tools really up here at college, so I'm going to have to wait till I go back home till I can actually make this. But anyway, um, hopefully you guys like the, uh, the videos and whatnot.